Hi, my name is Raj from MR Sports Cars. You may have seen my earlier episodes talking about going to see this car, picking it up, being extremely surprised at how nice it was and also all the spec and optional extras it has. I then went through and did a second video where I showed you all of the option codes and what bits on this make it special and what was spec from the factory over and above the, st the standard specification. Well, now I'm going to talk you through the process that I went through when going to view this car. So in order to prevent me from making a huge financial mistake and buying such a high value car and it ended up being a real problem in terms of getting it repaired or um, essentially it having a hidden past or a hidden history, I have to really look at it in detail. So for the first thing I do is have a good look around the car. So I look for any telltale marks in the bodywork, any dents, scratches, and you have to look at each panel in detail. Pay attention to the edges, pay attention to where it sticks out a bit so these wings you want to check that there's no sort of like dents or or a sort of like a, a rough a rough surface where it's been basically it's been knocked and then someone's filled it and then repainted it you'll see that when you look at the reflections where they're not quite smooth though you will see you will see bumps and the same on the front wings then the other thing I, I check as I'm going around is the headlights to make sure that there's no cracks they are as they are as they should be perfectly mounted in their spot and also all of these shut lines are as they should be so no huge gap or uneven gap between right and left so going round again the bonnet make sure that there's no dents in that look at the screen make sure there's no chips chips or cracks in the screen carry on going round check the wing mirrors make sure there's no sort of like scratches I mean there's a few light scratches here but no sort of like big repairs where it's it's come into contact with something and had significant damage then I go around and check the wheels because again, they could be quite expensive. These are diamond cut forged alloy wheels. Very expensive to repair. If the damage on them is, is particularly bad, then it's actually quite expensive to get them refurbished. And potentially you can't actually get the diamond cut refurbished because of the damage. So you would either have to get a new wheel or paint them all. So you'd lose that original look, that diamond chrome finish that they have and the two tone dark gray. So I check those, make sure there's no scuffs around the edges, no dents, dents on the spokes. If they're clean, look on the insides of them to make sure there's no dents on the inside from potholes. And then I look, I look at the, the wheel arches as well. Make sure there's no rust, there's no sort of like kinks, kinks in the metal. And then I haven't got a torch here, but I normally shine a torch and look at all of the internals, look for cracks, look for weld lines that shouldn't be there. There are obviously factory weld lines, but look for weld lines that aren't there that have been done because of an, uh, an accident repair. And you look at the tops of the dampers that are in there, look for leaks um, from, from, these, from these dampers, which I mean, they're, they're not too expensive. I think they're two or 300 pounds from Bill Stein but it's worth making sure that they're not leaking in the first place. Then I go through and I look, look at the seals, make sure they're not scraped up, haven't caught a curb. So the next thing I do is look at the brake discs and brake pads. Now these ones, and so this is one of the things that's on my to-do list is to get these properly checked out by Matt. He can measure the, 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 the minimum depth he can also look at the the pads. How good are they? For, from my visual inspection, I was, th these are borderline needing replacing because they are scored around the edges. So they're not going to be as effective as they need to be for such a high performance car. 
and again look at the, looking at the pads they're sort of about I would say roughly about 50% worn in these wheel arches I also check the um, the lower arms upper arms again with a very bright torch I actually use an LED lenser which is a great make of um, high power torches that run on regular batteries and in this in this uh, front driver side or offside front wheel arch the other place you look is actually in in through there and you actually see the coolant pipes just just in the back there and what you do is there's there's two joins there which connect to what's called the crossover pipes that's where the coolant pipes go over um, over all the suspension all over the the arms at the front of the the car and you want to check those to make sure that there's no coolant residue on those joins if there is it's either the the pipes that feed into the crossover or the crossover pipes itself the the feed into the crossovers aren't particularly expensive but the crossover is quite a labor intensive job to do so that can be quite costly this car has got a, a small amount of residue in that area so Matt's going to look at that area in detail and then we'll decide what parts actually need replacing then the other thing is I check the filler cap make sure again all the metal work is original there's been no damage and it's very hard to knock out any damage if there's been a big impact here in this section here and make sure all the plastics are as they should be then the next thing is I would open the boot and the the front boot area on this one immediately trying to do that this switch here has failed so it doesn't actually do anything so again that's on the list this switch is actually a part you can get from Porsche and it's a part we'll be we'll be ordering well we have actually ordered from Porsche to be replaced so then that will work and on, and then so the the backup system for that is on the on the key you've got the button here which you hold down and it pops the bonnet so luckily I, I could still do that just checking it that's all my stuff down there so ignore that I then check the battery so here you, you want to see if there's a decent newish battery here and that one is looks quite decent I also have a, a a device which you plug into a cigarette lighter socket in the car and you start the car and it will show you show you the um, voltage while the alternator is running with the engine running and basically you want that to be somewhere around 14 volts so next next on the agenda is to actually lift all of these plastic panels It's quite a fiddly job but basically what you want to see is are these screws undamaged undisturbed and if they are the likelihood is that this whole wing is original and as it should be if these have been messed around with there's scratches on the tops if they're rusty if they're a different color to the rest of the car then you need to look more closely into this section that relates to those screws so these screws hold on on the on the driver's side wing here and then what you could actually do if you did see that these have been disturbed is pull out this headlight with the headlight removal tool and you can have a look right into the wing you can see up to the filler cap there in, into that void so then you would know stuff that you can't hide the other thing I would do I won't do it on this video is I lift this section here because then you can see right into the front bumper and you can see the whole uh, impact bumper area so it, it's all the foam and uh, the the um, the ends of the of the the front chassis section and you can see basically if there's been any repairs or bodged bodged repairs from front end impact as a result so uh, the the plastic bumpers can hide a lot behind them which is why you sort of need to do that and I, again I won't do it here but I, I lift up this side as well and do exactly as the same as I did on the driver's side I also check the condition of the bonnet see whether it's got any corrosion if there's any I feel the edge of the of the paint to see if because normally if someone resprays the bonnet they don't spray the inside they just spray the top 
the top layer, the the outside, and then they'll mask along the edge. So you will feel like a rough line from where the edge of the paint starts. And on this one, there's nothing. So you know that it's all good. I also check under there whether all the tools are there. And you also feel around here, you can feel around here to see if there's a line from where it's been sprayed, you'll feel like a ridge. And then, I mean, it, it may look silly, but running your hands along the paintwork to feel how smooth it is. If it's quite rough in areas, you'll hear, you'll hear a sound, uh, the, the, the sound change of your, of your hands moving across it. If it's smooth, it's been clayed and polished, you won't really hear anything. This car still needs a polish. But if there's been any overspray from where, say, someone sprayed the bumper with it on the car, then you will feel around it. If they haven't masked very well, you'd feel it on the windows where they haven't masked. Um, it's amazing how far lacquer travels in the air when someone's doing sort of like a quick repair. So then I look at the engine bay. In the turbo, it's very crammed, so it's very hard to see anything other than the intakes, um, the air filter, housing. But you can look at things like the um, engine mounts back here see if they're undisturbed original then you can look at the the condition of all the pipe work does it look new does it look uh, supple has it been cleaned and then you can actually peer all the way down and see the the top of the engine so the inlets up there check the coolant level obviously obviously when it's cold don't open that cap cap when it's hot but you can look at you can visually inspect the level down the side there and then you've got your oil top up so you would open that check the for any sort of like residue in there i won't do it now because it's quite warm i've just been running it then check that the all the sensors look as though they're they're okay undisturbed where they should be exhausts aren't too smoky in appearance And then the next stage is to essentially start the car up. Now, ideally, when you go and view a 911 type or any 911, any Porsche, you want to be able to hear the car and see the car start up from cold because if there are any serious engine issues, you're likely to see um, excess smoke coming out from the rear tailpipes. You're likely to hear quite a lot of knocking when it's cold so seeing the engine start when it's cold is quite crucial and the, the way you can tell that is when you start up before you start up this this coolant should be at 40 or below likewise the oil as well so the oil oil gauge is there so you want to see that at um, at zero when you first start up then essentially what you do is you put it on in, on position one which is what I've done, and then just make sure it starts up cleanly. If it's cold, it will actually sit at above a thousand RPM for a, a, what's called a heat cycle to basically come up to temperature quite quickly. It will do an exhaust gas recirculation cycle to basically bring the temperature up quickly. Then the next thing I would do is check that the um, hydraulic spoiler goes up and down so i've just pressed that and then i would go outside and i'd see that it goes up without making any noise and then i'd press it again to make sure it goes down as well it's not making any any weird noises which is good again i've already got the sunroof open but you would check that the sunroof works as it should with the one touch operation we tilt and slide and one touch open and basically go through all of the electronics in the car one by one because honestly you need to you need to be thorough in checking everything because if something isn't working potentially it could be quite expensive to figure out why um, Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's literally the car's forgotten something. I've had a car where the memory seats had been forgotten, the, the, the panel in the door. So 
it was just a case of plugging in the Porsche diagnostic system and basically telling the car it had memory seats fitted and then it all started but it booted up and works fine. This car everything works except for the air conditioning and the way you tell is you put it on you put it on a low temperature and then you just turn the fan up make sure the AC is on so that ice light is on put it onto onto your your these these middle row of, of vents and you can actually hear it I mean it's, it's blowing warm so you know straight away it, it, it won't get cold um, you can actually hear sort of like sometimes fr old fridges make this noise of sort of like a hissing noise and that's what a, an aircon system that is low of gas will make so I don't know if you can hear I don't know if the cameras are picking that up the sound of that hissing noise so essentially that either a minimum it needs a regas but most likely with Porsches it will be the front radiators uh, the front condensers that need that need replacing so as soon as I turn the AC off but leave the fans running that sound disappears so it's basically the coolant system uh, the the AC system is low on on its um, air conditioning gas so I'll just turn them turn that down Um, so as I said, yeah, check everything works. Check all of the all the little bits, cup holders. Make sure they come out as they should. They haven't been broken. That they lock in position. Vanity mirrors that they work as they should. All the lights. Door pockets are working in whole. You just check the leathers so check that there's no in the wear areas so this area this area this area this area here you would check for any scuffs likewise on the bottoms of the doors check for water here check that these aren't damp it's quite hard when a car's dried but if it if a car's been recently washed then there might be a bit of moisture here and that will be from leaks in the the door seals that on the door card so basically water will run through these seals here and actually ingress through the doors and potentially down into this section here so feel under the carpets for any dampness it's quite a common fault the other place it can potentially leak water from is there is drainage holes in the front here that go down these pillars and also in the back here and down through the through the back there so there are just a few things that I look at when inspecting a car there's obviously a few more bits and pieces that I do to make sure that a car is what it should be I also go through the paperwork in in absolute detail look at the the VIN number in the windscreen look at the VIN number under the scuttle on the scuttle under the plastics um, just below the the windscreen and basically work out is this car genuine does it have a story to tell which isn't positive positive? and if everything is as it should be then essentially buy the car i hope you found this episode interesting happy to answer any questions if you have any specific comments or questions about looking at a car a specific car happy to help advise on porsches in particular i'm, I'm very familiar with most sort of like modern modern era Porsche and um, please like and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching